Hello and welcome to The Reviews Brothers. It's coming up to Christmas, which means I'll be watching all the Home Alone movies. Well, the first two anyway. So, what better to do after watching the films than check out the video game adaptations? What can possibly go wrong? Let's start with the first movie, which got a release on loads of systems. Here is the NES version, and to be fair, the premise is kind of what a Home Alone game should be. Basically, you play as Kevin McAllister, and the wet bandits have broken into your house and you've got to set traps to stop them. What's actually pretty cool here is that there is actually only one level, and you just have to survive for 20 minutes, at which point the cops arrive and arrest the thieves. You can explore the whole of Kevin's house, as well as his treehouse. The house is pretty big, and every room has a few traps that you can pick up and use to trip up Harry and Marv, who are always wandering around the house. If they see you, they'll chase you, and you better have a trap ready, because the wet bandits are faster than you, and you'll never outrun them. The traps don't respawn, instead any that you lay down just stay where they are, and you can pick them up and use them again at any point. If the wet bandits activate the trap though, then you have to wait a little while before you can pick it up again. Surprisingly, I enjoyed this game a lot more than I expected to. The controls are actually pretty decent, and the graphics aren't bad for a NES game. Some of the animation is pretty good, though the way you walk looks just kind of weird. The actual gameplay is pretty simple, but I found that every time I got caught, I wanted to just try again. If you press start, you get a map of the house and you can see where your traps are, as well as how long you have left until the cops arrive. Of course, there are some issues. The music for one is awful and on a pretty short loop, so you'll be hearing the same crappy loop for a long time. The traps all work exactly the same too. You literally just drop an icon with the picture of what it's supposed to be on the floor, and if Harry and Marv touch it, then they fall over. There's no point in having the different icons to them, like toys, nails or the spider, it literally makes no difference at all. Also, when you're in the garden, it's often hard to know where you can walk, as you can go up and down a little bit where you can't anywhere else in the house, it's a bit confusing sometimes, but you do figure it out quickly. Like I said though, this was actually more fun than I was expecting. I mean, it's not the best game I've ever played, don't get me wrong, but I did enjoy its simplicity. Of course, you can beat the whole thing in 20 minutes, so it is kind of shallow, and the ending just sucks. But it's actually quite a fun way to kill 20 minutes, and you likely won't be beating it the first time you try anyway. Oh, and did you see who it was made by? Interesting. The Sega Master System version of Home Alone is a very different game. This time round, you're playing as that scary ass monster from the X Files, and you have to run around a few different locations, starting with Kevin's house, then a fun house, then a garden area, and so on. A bunch of other non home related ones, basically. Each level has a bunch of items that you have to collect and then deposit in a safe on the wall. The wet bandits are also there, of course, and they will steal all the items if you're not quick enough. If one of them does take one of the items you'll need, you have to shoot them to make them drop it. But you never start a level with any ammo, so make sure you find some pretty sharpish. There's also dogs or other weird animals in the levels that will attack the wet bandits and make them drop whatever it is they have. What's annoying though is that there's no indication of when the wet bandits have an item, and they only need to take one for you to lose the entire level. So you could be on a level where you've found four out of five of the items that you need, then all of a sudden you get a black screen and you're told that you failed. Most of the time you want to avoid Harry and Marv, so the chances of you being anywhere near them to get your stuff back is also pretty slim. And the fact that you have no idea where they are, unless they're on the same screen as you, is just a bit dumb. The exit that they use is in the same place on every level, so it just needed to tell you that they have something so you could make your way to the exit and try and stop them. It would be a little more fair and a bit less frustrating. The levels have a few interactive things in them too. There's dumb waiters and closets that you can hide in, and some levels have things that you can bounce on that send you up to the floor above. These are pretty essential in later levels. Oh, and a pro tip for getting around, if you press down and jump, you go straight to the floor below. When I found this out, it made everything a whole lot easier. Graphically, I actually really like the way it looks. It's nice and colourful, and you can tell what everything is meant to be. Yeah, the stills from the movie are pretty dodgy, but that's a small issue. The controls are pretty good, but with one major issue, the stairs. After playing for a few hours, I still have no idea how you use the stairs first time, and Kevin has real issues going up and down them. It's annoying as hell. Basically, you want to use the bounce pads and lifts on any levels that have them, as much as you can. Stairs should be a last resort. Overall, it's actually a pretty fun game. I have no idea why they needed to add so much crazy shit in the levels. Maybe Kevin found his dad's LSD while he's been alone. 
Mega Drive and Game Gear games are both basically the same as each other. In these ones you start on a top down view where you control Kevin on his sledge. Honestly, I had no idea what the hell I was supposed to be doing. I mashed the buttons a bunch and I managed to get into a house and apparently the things I'd picked up on the sledge are traps. When you enter the house you get a blueprint to lay the traps, but no matter what I did I just couldn't get him to put them anywhere. I went into the houses anyway and collected more stuff and I saw Harry and Marv. I shot them a few times and that seemed to stun them for a bit, but that was all. I'm sure if I looked up some instructions there could be some fun in here, but it just seemed like a confusing mess to me. It didn't look too bad, but Kevin's creepy always smiling face was pretty unsettling. The sound effects are pretty bad here too, especially the Wet Bandit's van. I honestly thought the game had broken, but nope, that's just the sound that their van makes. It's that weird Mega Drive farty noise that it does, which to be honest just about summed up my enjoyment of the game. Here's a quick look at the Game Gear version. It plays pretty similar, only it's a bit more choppy. However, this version I did manage to get the traps set in the houses, which is good, but it still didn't really help me. Oh, and don't worry too much about the Wet Bandits in this one. Watch out for the freaking ghosts! Of course Home Alone 2 got a few games too. Here is the NES version. This one is a side-scrolling platform game that follows the plot of the movie surprisingly closely, but with the usual NES movie license bucket of random shit thrown in for good measure. Home Alone 2 is a pretty short game. You start off in the hotel being chased by the staff, as well as angry old women possessed suitcases and vacuums with a mind of their own. You can defend yourself against some of these things with a classic knee slide, but you also can find weapons like a dart gun, boxing glove gun and a necklace which you can drop to trip people up. Once you've made it to the kitchen and forced the chef to strip, no I'm not joking. Then you make your way through Central Park where you have to avoid crackheads and muggers, which is actually pretty realistic, until you get to your uncle's dilapidated house where Harry and Marv are out to get you. Luckily there's a few traps here that you can use against them. These traps are actually pretty cool and I like using them against Harry and Marv. Once you get out of the house you make your way to the Christmas tree where the pigeon lady helps you take care of the wet bandits once and for all. When you know what you're doing you can beat the whole game in about 20 minutes, only there'll be a lot of trial and error before you manage that. It all looks okay with some big characters and the controls are pretty decent, though they are a bit floaty. What is frustrating though is that some enemies will kill you in one hit whereas others just make you lose a bit of health and the only way to find out which one is which is when you take the inevitable hit from them. Thankfully there are a fair few power ups throughout the level, though they're mostly always hidden and appear when you touch just the right spot on the level so you spend most of your time jumping around like an asshole hoping for necklaces to fall out of the sky. Oh, and if you find a bell, Kevin turns into Sonic and does a spin attack that will kill most enemies, but not all of them. Any enemies that kill you in one hit can't be affected by this. The biggest issue though is the clipping when jumping. You have to know exactly where to land on platforms or you'll fall straight through them. There's a lot of very thin platforms that are easy to miss, especially in the abandoned house. Thankfully, not all of them are death pits, so you at least get to try again. Overall, the game is way harder than it needed to be, though I guess it's short, so it had to make up for it somehow, but once you get used to how the game plays, it's actually not too bad. The Super Nintendo version of Home Alone 2 is actually the same game, with better graphics of course. The levels are all basically the same, but they have been made a bit longer. Something that's really noticeable here is that when you're holding a weapon, Kevin's legs are the only things that are animated, and it looks really weird. Also with this one, they really went to town on the elevators on the first level. I thought the game had glitched, it was taking so long to get to the floor I needed to, but no, it just takes fucking forever. What an absolute waste of time. Check this out. The controls here are more responsive than the NES version, but the difficulty is just the same. In fact, I found this version a lot harder, and yes, you still spend most of your time jumping around like an asshole trying to find invisible items.
And finally for today, here's Home Alone 2 on the Mega Drive, or Genesis. This is a completely different game to the NES and SNES versions. Again, it follows the story pretty faithfully. This time though, you start in the airport, where apparently everyone wants to kill you. Luckily, in this game, Kevin is a master of weapons crafting, and he makes weapons out of things that you find laying around. You're shown what you need to make the level's weapons, and it's often a bit of a puzzle as to how you find the hard to reach items, but you'll soon be shooting baggage handlers in the face with custard bazookas. The graphics here are that kind of weird trying to be real style, and to be fair, there's a lot of detail here and the animation is pretty good. Some of the levels though have way too much going on, especially when you're on the streets in the snow. It's a sensory overload and there's so much shit all over the place that hurts you, it's impossible to keep track of it all, especially when none of it really stands out from the background. There are also a lot of those where the fuck do I go levels, which have a needlessly complex maze-like design and they're just not fun to navigate, especially the toy shop level. And there's times where you come to a brick wall and can't figure out where the hell to go, only to realise that you can just walk through that wall. This is one of those games that started out really promising, and the more I played it, the more it just tend to get frustrating. The mechanics are solid here, it's just that the level design is too annoying and it brings the whole thing down. It's a real shame. So there you go, there's a bunch of Home Alone games that I've played, so you don't have to. I didn't try out the Game Boy versions, but apparently they're basically the same as the NES versions. And yes, I know there is a Home Alone game on the PlayStation 2, but I don't have it I'm afraid. From what AVGN tells me though, I'm not missing out on much. Now all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, we upload new videos when we make them. And yep, you can find me on Instagram where I have hundreds of video game reviews. Just search for The Reviews Brothers. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.